You're here. I'm queer. And, uh, ooh. So like the Starbucks doll I made, this is another doll inspired by a food chain that I am obsessed with. If you're not familiar with Jollibee, um, you need Filipino friends. It is a Filipino fast food chain that started in the 70s and they have multiple locations around the world. It's always so nostalgic for me since I grew up eating it with my grandmother and I remember we would like when we didn't have money we would just order a plain white rice and also their gravy so it'd be like I don't know cents or like a dollar and I would eat that together and you know this is simple times but Ah, you know, my heartstrings. <laughs> but I feel like Jollibee is the Filipino answer to McDonald's because they are like the Marvel versus DC in the Philippines. The mascot Jollibee was introduced in 1980 and it's modeled as a large anthropomorphic bee mascot dressed in a blazer, shirt, and chef's hat. Like Ronald McDonald, Jollibee has its own crew as well. So here is Jollibee Langhouse Sorab. <laughs> oh my god. This is a new location uh, in Vegas. So uh, let's go. But let's meet Jollibee over here. So this is Jollibee. This is Jollibee. Hi. <laughs> yes. Let's go in. Welcome. Oh my god, I got a heart attack when I saw like, oh my god. Are you okay to be in the video? Hi. What was your name? My name is Jayanne. Jayanne, nice to meet you. Oh my god, you're shaky. Don't be shaky. <laughs> Do you like Jollibee? Yeah, I love Jollibee. Oh my god, I can't believe you opened here, right? Right, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so it's here. Our orders have arrived. You ordered the chicken, Joy. Does it give you joy though when you eat it? Yes, it does actually. This is the definition of joy. Yes, so it's breast and um, thigh? There we go. I don't know. Go. Okay, I don't know why, but Jollibee fries is, it's on a different level. I prefer it more than McDonald's. Is that crazy? <laughs> So my main tried and true is the uh, burger steak. Ah, so good, literally so good. I don't know why, but it's really just so good. I took you guys here to Jollibee because I, I am making a Jollibee doll. If you haven't noticed, if you haven't read the title of this video, and, uh, and we met a subscriber. Like, oh my god, win, win, win. Eat it. Ah. So good. Literally so good. I don't know why the fries are so good. <laughs> Mukbang. <laughs> now let's go back to the studio and work on this doll. So this doll is going to be heavily inspired by Terry Mugler. Like if Mugler and Jollibee had a baby, it would be this doll. <laughs> I really wanted to take the Jollibee mascot and turn it really fashionable. So I knew that things needed to be exaggerated to achieve the look I wanted. With that being said, let's go ahead and work on this Jollibee. Or actually, should we call her Jolly Bay? <laughs> yeah, alright. Before we buzz in, I wanted to take a second to thank today's sponsor, Audible. Whenever I am repainting dolls, I love to listen to audiobooks. I just find that it really gets me in the zone. If you're unfamiliar with Audible, they have the largest selection of audiobooks ranging from fiction, fashion, art, and so much more. 
while I wait for George R. R. Martin to complete the Song of Ice and Fire, you know, I need his take on Game of Thrones, I have been listening to The Good, The Bad, and The Barbie, A Doll's History and Her Impact on Us by Tanya Lee Stone. I have always loved documentaries and stories around dolls, and this focuses on our beloved Barbara Millicent Roberts. It talks about her journey when she was first introduced in the 50s and how her image shaped our society. It's a very compelling story since it talks about all the positive and also the negative sides to her influence and I think she will forever be an icon despite the criticism, but it was enlightening to hear someone else's point of view. If you want to give the book a listen, start listening with a 30-day trial and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals are free. Visit audible.com slash Hextian or text Hextian to 500-500. There's never been a better time to experience Audible. Each month, Audible members get three titles of their choice, one audiobook, two Audible originals, exclusive sales, and 30% off of all regularly priced audiobooks. So try it for free for 30 days by visiting audible.com slash Hexton or by texting Hexton to 500-500. Now let's get into business. <laughs> oh my god. So we will be using an Ever After High doll and this is Apple White as you can see. And wow, it's been a while since I actually repainted an Ever After High face. Uh, okay. <laughs> First, I'm going to take off all of her hair, and this one was specifically harder to take off. The glue was so gunky inside, so let's go and give her some hot spa time. I used a needle nose plier to pull the hair out from the neck hole and this is so gross because the glue is so sticky but oddly enough it is very satisfying. Now that her hair is completely gone we can also clean off her factory paint using acetone or nail polish remover. So now we have a clean canvas, I'm going to be rerouting her with red acrylic yarn. I just take my rerouting tool and I poke the yarn in one by one. Since this will be a chignon look, I focus the reroute to the perimeter of her head. Yarn reroutes can tend to be really thick and bulky, so pre-planning where the yarn plugs will go is really recommended, depending on the style you're going for. I keep forgetting to paint the scalp, so let's go ahead and do that now. I'm using red obviously because this will help the hair to blend in. Now we have completed the reroute process, make sure to secure it in place with a fabric tack. This will hold all the yarn plugs in the hair since we will be doing some intense brush outs. Wait for it to dry for about a day and we can finally brush out the yarns. I use these two pet brushes and I used the blue one first to separate the yarns and keep its length. Then I moved on to with the brown metallic one to fine tune the yarn and make it really fluffy. Now we have our fluffy yarn hair, I will use my hair straightener to straighten the yarn and make it even longer and silky nutmeg ganache. So for those who've had Jollibee before, share down below in the comments what you love about Jollibee. I know that the menu in the Philippines and international is different, so yeah, go ahead and share down below all of these fun menus that you love. I put her hair in a ponytail to keep it in place and she looks so cute with a ponytail actually. I am living for this. Like wow, this is everything. Like it just looks so cute and clean. We can finally move on to her face. I used Derwent watercolor pencils to sketch out what I wanted for her face. Mm -hmm. 
I definitely wanted to go for a more aloof look and have fun with Jollibee's vintage cartoon eyes. It's very 1930s, 1920s. And of course, we have a strong color story happening, so I wanted to give her yellow eyeshadow to match the overall look. Jollibee had a completely pitch black eyes, but it would have looked really flat and it would have been out of place with the doll's aesthetic, so I went for a dark brown. And of course, like any other Hexgen creations, a strong eyeliner is much needed. It needs to be strong enough to cut through a burger steak. Or actually like a yum burger. I really wanted to give her a vintage-inspired face-up, but something did not look quite right. So after some good night's sleep, I decided I hated how she looks, as you can see. Um, that's why I kind of rushed through this part. Um, the face just didn't scream like the Jollibee I wanted to portray, and it also felt very flat despite my attempts of preventing that. I knew I couldn't post this and be oblivious to not looking right for me, so I had to scratch it all off and start from the beginning. This is the beginning. So again, let's go ahead and remove the face up. And by the way, removing a custom face up, at least the one I did, is much harder than the factory face. After a few coats of Mr. Super Clear or MSC, we are able to once again sketch out a face. This time I kept focus and I made sure to really pay attention to the details I'm trying to put in. The lips will have a natural tint to it to bring all the focus onto the eyes. I decided to bring the yellow into her eyes instead of her shadow, and I thought that the monochromatic eyes looked really strong and it almost had a honeycomb vibe to it. I also made the pupil a hexagon shape that's inspired from honeycombs. I strayed away from going too dark on her eyebrows, and I made sure it gave her a happier look. For the eyeshadow, I kept it minimal with neutral browns, so literally I flipped the colors from the first face up. I'm almost halfway through and I'm already 100 times happier with this look. Like, I am very giddy and I love it so much. I use a white pencil to artificially highlight her nose. And now, for the second time, you get twice the fun, we add the sharp eyeliner. This is one thing I can't seem to escape from. I didn't want to make her eyes look too heavy again, so for the bottom liner, I kept it dark brown. And now we start to build the blush on her cheeks, nose, and chin. To make sure the sclera in her eyes are bright white, I use a white acrylic paint. Another effect I wanted to add was the Eggyo eyes or the Eggyo Sal, which literally means charming fat in Korean. This is a beauty trend popular in Korea of emphasizing the bags under the eyes by contouring it. It makes the person appear younger and sweet.
Now for her lashes, I got these from Daiso and I just trimmed them to fit her eyes. After that, I just gloss up her lips with Sculpey Gloss Glaze. And now we have completed our second attempt at Jollibee's face and I am so proud of it and happy I decided to redo her face up. She looks so sweet yet fierce at the same time and overall the vibe is just so much better. Here is a side by side at the first and second face up. I think the main reason why I failed the first time is because I had a locked in vintage face up in my head but I forgot to consider her face mold. And also I haven't worked with an ever after high face for the longest time and so I think I had to get used to it again. Lesson for today is to not be afraid to start over even though you are literally dreading it. <laughs> Now I can finally go ahead and move on to her outfit. This magical article of clothing was again created by the lovely Deluxe Designs over at Instagram. Heather is so so good and you guys need to check her out. Let's work on her bodysuit and add the yellow stripes to it. I'm using a yellow patent pleather and I'm cutting it in strips. Then I'm just sewing it in place. And I know, it's shocking. Yes, I sewed this. It was just not glued, it was sewed, honey. And then for her gloves, I will be using Warbla. I have first featured this in my Princess Morbucks doll, so check that out if you want to know more about Warbla. I think someone even commented that I will start to use it all the time now or in every single video. And yes, you're correct. <laughs> well, as, you know, as much as possible. Um, but I just paint the gloves and her hand with white acrylic paint. Let's wait for that to dry and move on to her wings. Jollibee had a tiny pair of wings, but this Jollibee, or my Jollibee, will have a much bigger one. Well, you know, big enough to see from her giant shoulder pads. I just sketch out a design that I cut out and traced onto a matte plastic packaging and I think this one is from a wig packaging of mine or something, I don't remember. But I just glue wire to frame the wings and make it poseable. Then, I started adding wing details with hot glue to retain the flexibility of it. And we should have something like this. I tried to paint the frames black, but it looks like a hot mess, so we will be keeping it clear. And back to sketching. Now I am drawing the bee's abdomen, not hers, but the bee part, the bee's abdomen, and I really wanted this to be three-dimensional. So I traced it in cardboard and I cut two pieces out of it. Then I cut the ends of them on the opposite sides so we can combine them together. I then added more pieces to each fold to make the frame rounder. We should have something like this, and oddly, it has a floral look to it. It's like very futuristic. <laughs> now I'm gonna stuff each crevice with tissue to keep everything light and airy. After everything is stuffed, I cover the entire thing with tape to blend it all. Using a white pleather fabric, I cut it in strips to give the spherical look.
after it's covered, we can finally paint it red and yellow. Let's go ahead and move on to the boots while that dries. I take a cardboard and I trace her foot and make it pointy. You guys know I love narrow pointy toe boxes. I of course trace that into Warbler because that will be the final soles of the boots. I just heat the Warbler up and lay it against the bottom of the doll's foot. Now you just have to wait for it to cool down and it will take the shape permanently. Now, using the same yellow fabric, I wrap her legs with the good sides facing in, and I sew the foot area as close as possible. I know, again, so much sewing. <laughs> Make sure to stop right at the ankle so it's easy for us to remove it. Now pull off the boots and flip it inside out. And again, we put the boots back in and now we can glue on the warbler soles permanently. And now we can finally work on the shape of the top part of the boot so we can go ahead and reshape it and clean it off. For the heels, I use a pin needle. I just love stiletto style heels. They're so uncomfortable, they're so unwearable. They're perfect! <laughs> I just poke it through the warbler and I line it properly. Then I take my epoxy sculpt to shape the heel and blend it with the soles. After that cures, I paint the heels yellow and the soles, you guessed it, voila! That's red in Tagalog. <laughs> and now we have completed the boots and it's very sickening, house down boots. To create Jollibee's chef toque hat, I also used Warbler to shape the narrow brim parts of it, but like the face, this had two attempts. At first, I used epoxy for the top part of the hat. I thought it was gonna be really cute if I sculpted it, but it was so heavy. Like, literally, if this falls into a glass table, that table would be a million pieces. It's so heavy. Like, it's like a rock. So I decided to scratch that and go for the fabric part. And you guessed it, we'll have, you know, we'll sewing again. Um, I take a softer pleather fabric and cut two big circles out of it. I then sew it good sides to good side, and before completing the stitches, I flip it inside out. Using these puff balls, I stuff them in the hat to give it some shape. Then, I use a bunch of stitching to create natural wrinkles and folds for the hat. I made another brim with Warbler and I just glue them together. We should have something like this. Now let's go ahead and paint the entire thing with white acrylic paint. For Jollibee's antennas, I used these pearl ended pins that I bent and shaped before painting it red. And for her hair, I take these red puffballs and I glue them together. 
We need some additional help with her hair to achieve a clean crescent moon chignon. After we have this red caterpillar looking thing, I take some additional yarn hair I've made and I cover the entire thing with it. Now let's pin it in place and brush her actual hair out. As you can see, we achieved an exaggerated crescent chignon that is clean and visible from the front. The main goal was to make the hair visible from the front of the face, so we got that. Pats on our backs. Now order up and let's dress her up. So I forgot to mention, but I did paint this. I made this bow. Um, it's just a bunch of ribbons. It's literally ribbons that I just kind of finagled. <laughs> but yeah, she needed a black bow. 